There are days in every race that live up to the billing. Stage three of the Tour of Catalonia was precisely that. Well, after victory, of course, on the opening day for Primoz Roglic, with Ramco Evenepoel pushing close, Giacconi getting in to snaffle one yesterday, stage three looked huge. 180 kilometres in total. How would this one pan out? Roglic versus Evenepoel was the billing at the top of the day, but a breakaway would surely play the game. Just look at the terrain. Climbing progressively through the day, over 4,000 metres of altitude gain, and we had a breakaway as classy as you like. Petilli, Guillaume Martin, Pipozana, the Italian champion, the Ecuadorian champion, Richard Carapaz, Maxim Van Hills, Cepeda, and Nicholas Egg. That was quality up front. The break was a handsome one by margin. It slowly but surely started to come down, however. And the reason was, Sudal Quickstep, they were in charge. And they were putting the hurt on on every single one of the peaks. And the likes of Egan Bernal is still on the long road back to recovery. The road seemed to be a very long one today. Well, we thought on many occasions that Richard Carapaz would perhaps just give up the ghost, but not a bit of it. The breakaway started to attack itself. In the end, there was three standing that were pushing on. They were enjoying life up front. That was the special climb dealt with. Guillaume Martin looked handy. Maxim Van Hills likewise, and Richard Carapaz was not to be shaken. But by the time we took this turn to our final climb, the gap was now tumbling. Carapaz, who'd done most of the carrying of the breakaway, kicked on himself, but it wasn't sand in anybody's hands. 10.2 kilometres from home, Sudal were mopping up. Their idea was to tee up Remco Evenepoel and shake out all challengers, including those who would be guiding Primoz Roglic. Well, our breakaway held on for last man standing. It was to be Maxim Van Hills of Lotto Destiny. Carabaz realising that this day was not to be. Just under nine kilometres to go then, and still Sudal Quickstep were punishing. But would they end up punishing themselves? We've seen many a team get it wrong by investing too much too early. They sailed by the coaches that would take them home. And then heading for home, Remco Evenepoel. And who would have the metal to go with? Primoz Roglic, of course. Would it be a two-up race? And if it was, would it be a disappointing one? Absolutely not. But yes, it was. Ha! Huh. What a drive by the pair of them. Asking for a turn. Evan Apol constantly demanding something of Primoz Roglic. UAE Team Emirates, not their cohesion shattered when Marc Soler pushed on without a thought for protecting Shao Almeida as well placed overall. Nonetheless, our minds were up the road. Bardet weaving as well here. And O'Connor also close at hand. Esteban Chavez had been busy the day prior. But just look at this inside the last kilometre. And Evan Paul said, OK, if you're not going to help, I'm going to help myself. It came to that final hairpin. And around it, he was to sail. The question is margin. Roglic at this point was holding on, knowing that with bonus seconds factored in, there would be four seconds between them if Evan Paul won, which he did. But what was going to be the gap? Maybe that celebration right there cost him the leader's jersey because it was a two-second gap. He trailed by six, meaning the margin between the pair of them absolutely dead level. But with better finishing positions, Primoz Roglic is still in the lead. Ciccone coming home, wearing proudly our red stripes of the mountains jersey. But really, this day was about Remco Evenepoel. Had a plan, made it stick beautifully delivered. What a race this is turning out to be. Two great riders close to the top of their form if Evan Nepal is not already there. Here's the stage as it finished, that two second margin plus the four seconds of bonus. Not enough to unseat Primus Roglic who stays in the lead of this race with the same time as Evan Nepal. Having won one and finished second on two occasions, Primus Roglic holds on to that lead, but will it be there tomorrow? 188.2 kilometres, we're heading down towards the coast, but La Molina, yes, the test that was the finale today, will be at the beginning of the day tomorrow. Straight out of the back door, they are climbing. 
This designed to be a hellish test and one that a breakaway could pass. Look at it. It demands a quality break. Will we get one? Or will it be a punch up between the two prize fighters in this race? You'll have to tune in tomorrow to find out.